Good morning, or lunchtime, for hey. those of you on the other side. We're outside. Yeah, we are outside. It's not crazy windy. And it's not stupid hot. No. Which is pretty nice. We have shade. This is amazing. Now, by the end of this, we may not have shade. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> well, this is like, keep moving. Oh, my great. Yeah. How's everybody doing? I'm tired. You're tired? We, we had a long day. We yesterday. had a big day yesterday working on a certain secret project mm -hmm. for a certain secret workshop. Cloud Sorry. is kicking the uh, the tripod because he's just sleeping over here. I'm about to step on his tail. Yeah, he's kind of in the way. He's kind of in the way. But see, we can't move the camera over because then you would see our super secret project. <laughs> so these are the things that we deal with. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. So today we were going to answer a bunch of questions about our house build. So many questions. Are, we're breaking ground this weekend. Yes, we are. Like today or tomorrow. Yep. That's so exciting. don't try to talk us out of it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so yeah, so we're going to talk about, there's so many good questions, good ideas, good thoughts, good comments. Um, so we're going to go through, I think I said I got almost 50 questions to look through. Um, and that's just... There was a lot of questions that were the same thing, so I, like we didn't even we tried not to repeat them. Right. Yeah. So anyway, let's talk about the house. Okay. What do you say? Are you ready? Are we just gonna jump into this? Yeah. Sorry, my throat's a little sore. <laughs> do you want some water? Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Let me just step over the dog. <laughs> we had an instance with our dogs this morning, and it caused me to yell, and so my throat hurts really bad. Dogs got a little frisky with each other. Um, so, I want to go ahead and jump into our comments now so we have time to answer any questions on the actual live here a little bit later. You mean you our know. questions? You said our comments? Our, well, they were comments. Oh. And they are questions. Okay, I'm real confused today. <laughs> we have questions that we're answering. We do. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me find... Oh, my gosh. I should have done something with my hair. No, your hair looks great. Okay. <laughs> So, first question we're going to answer from Darla. She's one of our homies. Oh, no. Hold on. Oh, I got I to gotta turn off my... I should learn by now. All right. So, Darla asked, do we use pressure-treated lumber or regular lumber on our builds, even those that we shishugi bond? Good question. You never want to shishugi bond lumber that's been treated. Yes. That will release a lot of toxic chemicals that you do not want to be breathing. Mm -mm. So we always use untreated lumber if we're going to Shishugi Bond. Yeah. I think we've only, the shade cell posts were the only ones that we've bought treated lumber for. Mm-hmm. That's, yep. yeah. I don't know what we'll do when we get to the house build because <laughs> we won't need wood for a while. Um, obviously for like window frames and door frames, we're going to need wood frames but yeah. we haven't really decided i don't want treated just because i don't want that to leach like i just don't want the chemicals in the house okay so we'll probably we'll get to, to that later bus. we'll figure that out later but yes <laughs> okay don't uh, burn treated wood sorry this is really small uh hunt and candace another one of our homies they said based on experience we had one of our washing machine lines break and flood the entire house with a couple of inches of water well Boo. Okay, so um, they said uh, wherever you have your water plumb, drop that room level by a few inches and provide a sump pathway vent to the outside. This would minimize damages. Um, so yeah, so we're thinking about low point drains for sure, and we'll get into that when we get to the septic. But yeah, that's something we have definitely thought about is water heaters, washing machines, things that uh, have a tendency to break and leak. Like, do we have a path for that water to escape and not flood the entire house? Can we go into a little more detail on that? Sure. Okay. So our laundry room, like our laundry room, yeah. it will have a washer and dryer in it. It also is kind of separated by a wall where our water heater is going to be like our utility room. Mm -hmm. So all those things are kind of in the same room but there is a wall of separation. We decided with the water heater, it's just gonna be in a pan and we'll have some kind of a monitoring system. If there was a leak, it would like notify us. Yeah. 
It also depends on what kind we use. If we do an on-demand, then it can't be in a pan because it mounts to the wall. So right, have to but there's still out. mounts. It, there's still something that you can get that will detect if there's water leaking. Yeah. To where we will be notified. But in the laundry room where the washing machine and the dog washing station is, there is a low point drain for that reason. Yes. Is that too much? Good explanation. Okay. okay. Here's another question we got a lot also from Darla. Uh, she said, have you considered doing earth cooling? Um, so <clears throat> that has a bunch of different names. Uh, what's the other name for it? Earth cooling. Uh, I'll passive, think of it later. Passive, passive something. Heating, cooling, passive cooling. So the idea is you have these tubes, right? And they they go underground a certain depth for a certain distance and then you have a fan attached to it and so the idea is that you pull the air in through the outside and then it goes underground where it's cooler and it cools that air and it's got to be a certain distance so it actually ends up being cool and then you pull it into the house and you use that as a way to sort of use a very low power fan to move that air it's a great idea however in our case because we have so many rooms in this crazy roundhouse design, it just doesn't, it doesn't make a lot of sense to do it for this house. Um, also, it doesn't make a lot of sense for us to do it solely because we don't have a tractor. <laughs> like, can you imagine digging six feet down for tubes yeah. and then like 50 feet long? Yeah. That's just not in a, like, as something we cannot do without a tractor. And also that idea, it works really well with, um, especially like a dome that's sunken down. So you gotta be down that depth anyway for it to work. And we don't have anything underground in our house design. So if we did, we'd definitely be looking at something like that. And it's a great idea. It just, uh, it just doesn't work uh, great for our particular house design. <laughs> I think I would like to experiment sometime when we have a tractor doing a build that way because it also yep. heats like in the summer Right, you should be pulling in because you know once you get far enough underground, this the temperature kind of equalizes, right? So yeah, it should work both ways. Yeah, theoretically. Uh, I I visited a worm farm in Phoenix, Arizona worm farm. Hmm? Great place if you're in Phoenix, yep. go see, go check them out. But they have a greenhouse that's passively heated like that. So they have a tube that runs the width of their greenhouse, and it comes up, and that keeps it the same temperature year round. It's pretty cool how it works. Yeah. Yeah. I would like if to. If you experiment. have a big open space that's sunken down, it's perfect. Yeah. You have a large round building with a bunch of rooms and not underground. This doesn't work for us for this. Yeah. So. Maybe we'll build like a community or like a big open room, like just a big circle room and do that mm -hmm. just to experiment. And it can be like a hangout <laughs> one day. Okay. Next question. Um, so we had talked about in our utility video about doing a home run or a manifold system for the water where we have one line coming in and basically like a fuse box for all the water lines that would run to each individual spot. Um, so this is Mikey B. Mikey says, are you okay Sorry, over there? Sorry, there's an ant by me. <laughs> said, um, home running the water indicates a mechanical room to centralize all the home's utilities. Yes, we will have a little utility closet. Um, and will that include running water pipes conduit cable between the courses and the wall. Um, I can understand how difficult it will be to lock in those placement decisions so early. Uh, so you want to get into framed versus earth bag walls? And there's another question about that here later. Um, but basically we're going to be simplifying a lot of our internal walls so that we don't have to worry about putting conduits and, and all that stuff in earth bag walls now. This is in Monday's video. We're this giving in, away. <laughs> well, no, I mean, we're going to talk about it here too, because okay. we're talking about earth bag versus frame walls. Do you want to talk? Okay. So we decided to simplify our, our rooms in our house. They're not all earth bag walls that separate the kids' room. A lot of them are framed walls yeah. that will allow us to... That's going to simplify so many things. And, yeah. Electric, and, water... Power, like all of it. Yeah, and we were worried about structural integrity, but also in our video coming out next week, we actually got to talk to the Willow and Roundhouse people, mm -hmm. um, and so got a little more confirmation there about that circular structure. It doesn't really need a lot of additional buttercing in between 
the hallway wall and the back wall. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do most of those walls framed instead. And like you said, that will, it opens up a number of possibilities and simplifications for a lot of our utility lines. So we're excited about that. <laughs> I don't know if that answered the question. Yeah, there will be a utility room where... Were they asking about where the water lines go? Well, they were just asking about like, is there a centralized spot? Yes. Yes. So the, the utility, utility room will have the water heater, the water manifold, the electrical box, uh, probably internet router. We are we were just talking about audio cables, so there might be like a centralized audio system. I don't know. Sky's the limit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, internet, also data cables, like we'll be, we'll have a home run for all the data cables to all the different rooms, because, you know, earthbag walls and data cables don't mix. Yeah. Yep. Hey, um. Whew, yeah. You remember the, these things over here that I wanted to show people? Do you want to do that now? I didn't know if you wanted to, like, do one every now and then. This seems like a good break, yes. Okay, let me go grab one. Guys, quick break. Uh, Ashley went back to her friend's house, Glassius Flux, and she made some really cool stained glass thingies. Yeah, a big shout out to Tracy from Glassius Flux. If you don't know her stained glass shop, you should, because she makes the coolest stuff. And she let me come over to her place and make some little art pieces that have a little meaning to us. Ready? Ready. Oh, uh, see, I like how you let the light come right through there. Yeah. Yeah. I did it on purpose. It was nice. It was nice. <laughs> okay, so this is the first piece. We're going to be selling these little pieces. Um, it's like our little stained glass door on our Casa de Caca. And um, we're just trying to raise money for our house build because, guys... <laughs> House builds are expensive. It's so expensive. Uh, and yeah. we wanted you guys to have the opportunity to have a little piece of like our little homestead. This one has mirror frame around it. So you can kind of see it's a mirror. Nice. But it's like the same colors as our door. Mm -hmm. Isn't that so cool? That's so cool. Anyway, this is the first one that is available. <laughs> Ta -da. So you only made five of these. I did. Well, I made six, but I gave one away. That's true. So, um, we have five of these. We'll be showing them to you throughout the video. Are we going to actually do the link yet? We'll do it at the end. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll wait. We're just going to let you know that later, the later in the live, we'll give you the link Look too. Look at the shine on it. Do you see that in the video? It's so cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This in is another life, probably you're my favorite glasser. one. Well, I wish I was <laughs> Like, I enjoy doing it. But I'm not, you know, I'm I not think Tracy. You're, I think you're pretty good at it. There's flaws, but it's it's beautiful, pretty. Isn't it's pretty it? good. Yeah. Okay. It's anyway. pretty good. Okay. I just Are thought you... it would be cool if people could have like a little part of our door. A little, a little piece of our poop shack. <laughs> <laughs> Is that weird? <laughs> it's a, it's a cool. Uh, anyway. I know what you mean. Anyway. Yes, yes I know. It's um, a little part of our homestead. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say it's part of our poop. I'm pack. sorry. I just had to. Okay. All right. So, Lisa J. Butler, you left this comment five days ago. You said, I have a question about the concrete slab and utilities water pipes. If you're worried about not being able to make changes on the fly, why not, why not pour the slab lower in the ground and build a floating floor above it, leaving a crawl space for pipes and wiring, et cetera? It's a good, a good idea. It is a good idea. It also sounds extremely complicated, um, and that would push our house up really tall. Even taller. And we're trying to keep as low profile as we can. We don't want people like, Oh, there's a house over there. Like, yeah. we want to stay as low profile as possible. Yeah. So, hold on. So, we're going to have to jump around on our questions here because uh -huh. because we need to, we got to talk about water lines and I want to make sure we, we. You should have organized I them. should have. I didn't even there's think too about many to this organize. yet. Uh, we can come back to it if we need no, to. No, no, it's good. I think we want to. I'll just stand here. Well, I'm sorry. Oh, you scroll. We'll get to you later. Okay. <laughs> so, as part of this whole redesign, we had decided the water lines are not going in the concrete pad. 
Yeah. To simplify things. So the only thing that's going under the pad are going to be the septic lines. Or not, yep. like sewer lines, yeah. I guess, right. Um, now, whether we just pour the concrete plaid and that, concrete plaid, the concrete pad and that is the, the floor floor is something we can talk about later. Okay. Um, but I think, yeah, you're right. Like if we poured that pad and then we put a pretty decent space and then a floor, that's more earth bags, that's a taller building. Um, yeah, we don't want to be basic... on really tall walls as we're building. So. Yeah. It's basically paying for the floor twice at that point yeah. um, also. So I don't think we're going to do that, but we are going to simplify and just have the sewer lines underground and mm -hmm. everything else will be outside of the pad. Except for maybe a few electric lines. I was thinking in the island there's going to have to be power that yeah. runs up through there, but I think that's the only point that can't drop down from the ceiling. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Okay, uh, Running Gray said, are you getting new solar panels or are you moving the ones you have up on your roof? So this is going to be a whole new power system. The existing power system and ground mount are going to stay where they are. They will be, they may even be a backup system. Like we've even talked about hooking the system we have into the new system um, so that if there's a lot of clouds, we can kind of pull from that if we're not using a lot of power over here. Anyway, sounds really yes, cool all new panels on the roof, uh, the p existing panels will stay where they are. Is that, was that faster? But, yeah. Okay. I, when you start talking power, I just get I'm so confused. sorry. Okay. All right. Here's the big one. So many questions about propane versus electric. So here's, the, que understand, here's the question. I understand people's concerns. I know. Here's the question. So, oh man, this is a username. RBS9131. 9131. 9131. Uh, says, puzzled about continued use of propane. It is much more energy efficient to use electricity, induction top for cooking, split energy cycle pumps for heating and cooling, burning propane in an enclosed area is bad for your health and produces a lot of CO2, which is affecting the climate. Um... So there's a lot of misconceptions about propane. Propane is not natural gas. Uh, propane actually burns very clean and has virtually no carbon footprint. Um, a lot of people talked about how propane was way more expensive than electricity. And I think if you're coming from an on the grid perspective, yes, uh, it is probably more expensive, but it's to <laughs> running heat and cooking with electric uses a lot more power than people realize. Um, and so if you're on the grid, it's not something you really notice, but to basically for the, like the stove that you want and the dryer and the hot water heater, uh, we would have to like multiply the size of our, how many solar panels we need, the size inverters we would need. We'd have to like double our battery bank. It would be way more expensive to build an electrical solar system to do all that stuff without propane versus paying a couple of hundred bucks a year to just get a big propane tank filled up. It's more than a couple hundred. $500 a year to fill up. I mean, it's a f tiny fraction of the cost of what it, so we're trying to, we're, we're trying, trying to, to find a balance, point. right? Yeah. Like, um, that's not to say that it's not, it's not out of the question. Like mm -hmm. we might be able to make it work and we might be able to figure out the math to do it all solar and electric, but it's a lot more it's, birds like, no, you shouldn't use propane. <laughs> uh, from a, from like a power usage standpoint, it's actually way more efficient to use propane for certain things versus just building a massive solar power system to do all that stuff. One yep. thing too, um, we're actually going to have two ovens. One for summer and one for winter. Mm, inside so outside, inside yeah. we're gonna have well no, inside we're gonna have a wood cook stove. Oh right right sorry. Yeah. So I'll be using the wood cook stove in the winter, mm. and that's gonna cut down on propane. Right. And in the summer we plan to have a cob oven outside. Mm -hmm. So that I'm not gonna be using that much propane inside, and it will be vented. Obviously I'm gonna have a hood and like take all the precautions. We'll have like a monitoring system for yeah. propane sensors and... Yeah, yeah, like, you know, we've had propane in the Airstream for years. And, and I know it's not great for you. I, d I do understand that. It, it can be, but also it, 
like worst case scenario, like you get a little dizzy or nauseous, and then you realize that there's a leak, and then well, you take care of it. Well, I mean, no, people have, people have died from that. But, well, if you ha if you let it, like, yeah, I mean, if you let a ton of propane in your house, obviously that's a problem. Yeah, but we would be using all the precautions. We would have monitors and. Obviously, like in the summer, I don't cook a lot inside. I would have a setup outside, and in the winter, I have the yeah. wood stove. So, um, also, I think we'll be as okay. part of that comment, too, I mean, we are cloud. <laughs> we are doing uh, quite a few mini splits to offset that. So, like, we're not going to have a furnace in the house. We'll have the wood stove, and yeah. then we'll be using the heating elements on the mini splits for individual rooms. We'll be using the mini splits to cool a lot of the rooms. Um, so, like I said, it's all about finding that like balance between mm -hmm. all those things. Um, and also, like, it's kind of uh, it's kind of like I don't know. What was I gonna say? <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Um, it's okay. We all do. I know. What were we talking about? We were talking about propane, heating, cooling, cooling, uh, <laughs> mini splits. Mini splits. Next question. Man, totally lost wow. it. Uh, anyway, yeah, it's about, oh, it's a backup power source, yeah. right? So we got struck by lightning last year. Um, we didn't have AC power for a long time until we were able to get a new inverter, which is also, it's difficult to do that on short notice when you live in the middle of nowhere. Um, it would be nice if we could still heat and cook with propane as a backup power source if the AC power goes down. And yeah. we'll get into other backup power systems later. Um, but yeah, it's all about trying to find that balance and trying to not be completely dependent on I don't want to be one thing. Yeah, I was going to say one piece wanna... of gear is not a good solution when you live in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. That's what we've learned. Yeah. Also, can I tell you something? Yeah. Um, they make these little portable electric cooktops that you could like, they're tiny mm -hmm. for like one pot. Yeah. So I could use that. Like if I'm like, oh, I don't want to use the propane. Like I could pull one of those out if for like a quick meal. That's true. That's a so good point. So I'm not, I, just because I have a propane oven and stove doesn't mean I'm we'll going to be using, be using it, it constantly. Yeah. And we may end up splitting it. Like we found these really cool, um, water heaters that have heat pumps in them like mini splits that use way less power most of the time but they can turn on that 220 or 240 element if they need to um if it's not keeping up so th there's a lot of there's a lot of ways to kind of split the difference and mm -hmm. anyway we've talked okay, about this yeah, too long, that's too long. <sighs> i told going. you propane yeah. was gonna be I a know. whole thing you i know get really passionate well even even since we did our airstream renovation we've had so many conversations with people helping them design their own Airstream renovations, and so many people just are worried about propane. Um, I, I understand it. And I, I get it, but I also think that, that unless you've run electrical for heating and cooking, you have you don't understand like the thousands and thousands of watts that those things use what and was how that? quickly they would deplete your battery. The oven that I picked out, the electric <laughs> version, what was it, 12,000? 12, 12,000 watts. 12 kilowatts max. I mean, that's max. That's if she had like everything on running all the time which is probably not gonna happen but um yeah except on thanksgiving except on thanksgiving <laughs> <clears throat> but then that's winter so then yeah. i would probably be using the wood stove so anyway are we ready to move on yeah okay this question from tyke matlack 7588 um oh that's long are you reading that whole thing so this is talking about uh, recirculating pumps. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but okay. but yes, recirculating your hot water is a great idea, especially with an on-demand water heater. So the idea is that your hot water heater has to get that hot water all the way to whatever faucet you're running it to. And in our case, we're gonna have some pretty long runs because it's a weird shape and it's a circle. It's going up in the ceiling. It's going up in the ceiling and back down. Um, so there are ways that you can like loop that hot water so that it gets to it faster and you save a lot of energy. So we're definitely gonna be looking into that. So good tip. Okay. Yeah, see more, more stuff about propane. Um, Anyway, we've talked about that. Okay, here's an interesting thought. I don't think we're going to do this, but we'll talk about it. Okay. Okay. Um, Robin Drucker 2983 says, uh, My husband, the engineer, suggests an exterior wall 
two feet away from the exterior house wall so that the space between can be used to hide utilities and allow access to work on them. This would act as a thermal break. Um, so, I mean, I, we're not going to be putting a whole other wall around our house because that would be so much earth bag. Um, that and, is a good idea, though. Well, but then we would cover the whole house. I was talking to my sister the other day. Yeah. And she has this idea to build, like, you know, this underground house. But then there's, like, an eight-foot uh, wall, like spaced out eight feet all around that house and that is where the water goes and that mm. is where the power goes but it's also a useful space sure yeah so i think kind of like the chicken garden yeah. yeah exterior courtyard um so in our case you know we're building the courtyard into the inside of the building sort of the, that that courtyard in the mm. middle and and we haven't really talked about this but the idea is that that wall is actually going to be our thermal break for all of our bedrooms because we have that hallway space, right? And it's facing west. Yeah. There'll be a lot of windows that are really tall to where we can open that top of the window and let that heat out before it can mm -hmm. reach the kids' rooms. Yeah. So we're kind of we're kind of doing that but without building the extra wall on yeah. the outside. If that makes sense. I think it's a good plan. I, I think, think it's our a good house plan. design is pretty cool. I think we we got it locked in and I'm pretty excited about it. I hope it, it works the way that we think it's going to. <laughs> Uh, okay, let's see. Um, let's see. Maria. It's so hard to Mina, read all the. Minichini117 um, says My suggestion is to put a router in your ceiling. We had a booster for the internet. Um, so I had to run hard lines and drop them into each bedroom so we could work. Yeah, so. That is what we're definitely thinking about doing. We'll have sort of that centralized space in the utility room, and we will run Ethernet lines to, to every room, essentially, so that if we did need to kind of boost or extend the Wi-Fi, we can just put a little unit in there. And if not, then we don't have to, and then that place won't get Internet. Well, the, the Willow End people... Um, um, we're talking about they had something in the ceiling. What was that diff How was that different? You could also just go ahead and, and mount your little booster in the ceiling to each room if you didn't want to run hard lines. Um, okay. But it kind of depends. Like maybe you have like a thing, like a, I don't know, like an Apple TV or something that it would be better if you just plug the Ethernet cable in the back of it so that you're not worried about Wi-Fi all the time. Like there's certain rooms you might want to be able to plug in things and certain rooms you may not. Eh, it's a know. breaking point. It's what? It's a breaking point for me to introduce another stained glass piece. <laughs> Okay. Sorry, I was. That's what I was. When you were talking, my mind was like stained glass. Okay, we'll go get it. Stained glass piece number two. Okay, this one is actually really special too because Tracy designed this one. She picked out the colors for this one and made it. Um, I like it. Isn't it cute? I like it. And it's um, you can hang it either way. I'm gonna get some water. You keep talking. Oh no, don't leave. <laughs> anyway, this is the second piece that will be available. Uh, that's all. Is that a good? Is that good? That's it? Yeah. We have, well, I'm gonna reiterate, we only have five of these. We're trying to raise some money for the house build and we're gonna do the link later in the live. Yes. So it will be a mad scramble dash. Yep. What's our next question? <laughs> you have them, I don't know. Uh, oh gosh, Drown Rig. I don't know how to say that. Uh, he said, from an Irish plumber, probably common sense, but just going to say it anyway, all connections to the main septic run under the slab should be made with Y fittings in line with the flow, never T fittings. Yes, that is a very good point. Um, we've been doing a lot of reading and research on plumbing. Yeah, fittings. so so what he's saying is that. Uh, if you have like a main sewer line and then you're you're plugging into it from your toilet or your shower or whatever It shouldn't just go straight into it. You get what's called a street T or Y or I don't know, Sanitary T. San yeah. So it, it's already got a bend in it So the water's all flowing this way. So it makes sure that it flows into the flow of water on the way out Yes, good question. I mean good comment. Yes. Okay. I see you. All right Okay, uh, 
Colstus2560 said, did you consider underground concrete water tanks? They can be right next to the house and are invisible and keep the water cool in the summer. Um, we definitely considered building our own underground cistern with earth bags. Uh, I think after we've seen the potential for flooding here um, with crazy monsoon events, we're staying away from underground stuff for now. Um, is that fair? We'll see. We'll see. Uh, we could totally build um, an underground cistern that is way cheaper than buying the above ground one that we have picked out. But we can't do that where we have it currently planned because it's right next to the septic. Also, so if it's it above ground, forever. it's fine. Yeah, so if it's above ground, and, and this was another question that I'll reiterate later, but our water tank location is next to the septic, but it's above ground and it's, they should never like mix yeah, or touch or anything. We've talked to our water guy and we've talked to the septic guy about it. So we feel comfortable with the plan that we have now. Building an underground cistern somewhere could be a potential later on. I just, I know how long it's gonna take and so that's a deterrent for me because yeah. we have other things we need to build. I think for the main house, we're going to keep it above ground. Yeah. Um, also, I don't love the idea of having a large underground cistern uh, near the house. If it ever leaked, like yeah. you would have major, 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 major problems. Oh, my oh. gosh. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, it wouldn't be good. It would be a problem. Are you going to be able to I can do him? it. I can do it. All right, uh, Paul Whitfield, 3453, says, Ceiling AC units are prone to condensate draining problems, needing auxiliary pumps to assist. So we had talked about mini splits. They have versions now with like a large centralized unit above your ceiling, and then you can duct it to wherever you go. And yes, those units come with a pump built in so that you can make sure to push that condensation out. Um, we'll talk more about that later. But yes, there there are potential issues with the air conditioning and the ceiling for sure. Um, okay, this is a good one. Todd Julie Richards, twenty seven fifty one. No, sorry, twenty five seventy one. Dyslexic said. Uh, so my grandson came in watching me and asked if you were building the Millennium Falcon from Star Wars, uh, and she said no. This is their first home, and he says so. Luke's aunt and uncle built the Falcon. They should have Luke use the Force so it's done faster and he has more power. <laughs> He's seven, and I love it. Uh, also, yes, it does look like the Millennium Falcon, and we may name it the Falcon. I don't know. We're still still working on names. But, yes, it does It does remind me of that for sure. Well, it's not the original plan. It was not, like, planned that way. No, it wasn't. All right, uh, Mary F. Mills, 30, 30. Maybe I shouldn't do the numbers at the end. Yeah. Mary Mills, she says, uh, previous video you stated distance between the septic and water storage is 100 feet. And they don't look like they're 100 feet, and that's true, um, but that's because... Wait, what is 100 feet? The distance between a septic and a well, mm -hmm. not above ground water storage. So that is the big difference. If you're, if you're digging down into the ground with a well, you want that to be 100 feet from your septic installation for obvious reasons. But in this case, because it's above ground and it's separate, it's not a problem. And we're not planning on drilling the well, so. Nope, not there. <laughs> Definitely not there. Um, okay, Dustin, ABC, says, uh, since you have four bedrooms sharing one bathroom, it might be, might be helpful to separate the sink from the Ow, toilet. Don't bite me. So you can have people in both spaces at once. Uh, <laughs> Why it bites my chin all the time? What do you think about that? I Did you listen? No, it no. bit me. It bit me, and I lost concentration. What? <laughs> Kids are all sharing a bathroom. Yeah. Would it make sense to put some sort of separator in there so they could go in and use the sink or the toilet while someone else is getting a shower? No. I don't think there's room. We don't have room for that. Yeah. We could put a little sink in the utility room. True. Yeah. We could but do I don't that. know what they would do. They wouldn't be able to brush their teeth because their toothbrush would be in the bathroom. Well, they just needed to wash their hands. I mean, yeah. we also have a sink in the kitchen. We have two sinks in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Three sinks in the kitchen. Yeah. So, there's options. 
Okay, let's talk about septics for a second. Wait, but while we're on bathroom, because someone else was like, four kids and one bathroom is ridiculous. You should always have more than that. I'm like, we have six people and we've been having one bathroom for eight years. <laughs> Seven years. Seven years. We did the math the other day. Eight years. No, we've actually. been traveling eight years. Oh, that's true. Yeah, if you count the other RV. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. we'll be fine. It'll be okay. Yeah. Um, one bathroom for four kids is fine. And we have another bathroom in our room. Like, if they need to use our bathroom, they can use our bathroom. And we have another toilet And we at have the an outhouse. outhouse. And we have the airstream. We're, like, building stuff. We have options. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, John Bishop said, I'll tell you from experience, if you run gray water into a septic tank, you will have to pay to get it empties. Where if you don't, it will naturally work by itself. Um, so... I mean, I think generally you kind of need to get a septic pumped every so often. They're supposed often. to be every three to four years. Um, but I understand what he's saying, that if you keep the good bacteria in there, it should mostly work. I don't understand what he's talking about, gray water. What? What? He's saying if you add gray water to a septic, you mess it up and you have to pay to get it pumped. But I don't Why know would, if that's How true. would that mess it up? Be, I don't know. That's not going to mess it up. Soaps just, and detergents and cleaning chemicals will kill your natural bacteria. So it depends on what you put down. That depends on what you put yeah. down. And we don't yeah. use any chemicals that are antibacterial type things anyway. So yeah. So, that, so I guess I, I understand what he's saying. That does make sense that if you are putting a bunch of antibacterial right. stuff down into the septic, you're kind of messing up the whole septic right. thing. But, but most people do that because that's what's mostly available at the store. Yeah. Right? But we, we won't be doing that. Um, we'll use the appropriate cleaners. Yeah. Okay. Also, someone mm -hmm. said to throw down a handful of dog food down your toilet every now and then, and that helps your. There's so day. many like weird. Jeez. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Who knows? Um, okay. This is uh, the video maker man. He said so. He talks about the underground tank too, which we've already talked about. Um, but. He has other questions. Did you have trouble getting a permit to build this style house? So if you're not familiar, we're part of the owner builder opt out here in Cochise County, which means we don't need like an engineer to sign off on any of our plans. So it also means we're opting out of inspections, which means it's difficult to get insurance and, and selling it is kind of a whole different thing, but those are the trade-offs that we've chosen to make. So the permit, they don't really care what we're building. Um, as long as it's the size that we said and Where it's we were make sure it's not too close location. to our fence lines and stuff yep. like that. Yep. Uh, will there be a window in each of the bedrooms? Yes. Yes. There will Multiple be. windows. Well, don't bite me again. Goodness, you're gone. You've lost your privileges, Kat. Yep. yep, you're done. Uh, will, what will be the size of your solar system? We're still working on it. Very large. Oh, it bit my foot. What are you doing? <laughs> Animal problems. Why is it biting? I don't know. Have you considered a biogas setup, says Romlin 99 Yes. I have considered that. Um, <laughs> this cat is going to bite me to death. It's mine now. Can't um, bite my chin. I got a beard. <laughs> we have thought about it, but we just don't want to deal with it. I think to uh, biogas is cool for like a single person. Um, yeah, as a family of six, it would be require a huge system. It would get really complicated. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. We have thought about doing that. We we would like to do like an outdoor kitchen, like a big pavilion type thing where we can have community over and friends and family and um, just a big hangout space, but yeah. having an attached bathroom to it that uses that and then use that gas for cooking but then mm -hmm. we thought maybe people would be weirded out about how they're cooking their food on poop fumes <laughs> i mean that's what it is i know it's just it's, so, it's such a different mindset you know yeah uh again like yes it's a viable option but probably not for a family of six not yet not they're still working on yeah. it <clears throat> um jn mattis says uh, we should we should schedule marriage counseling before we put the roof up. 
I think we should schedule marriage counseling before we start digging trenches. Uh, anyway. It costs too much money. <laughs> we'll just uh, have to... his, his other more relevant question was, uh, how tall will your, will your ceilings be? Do you want to get into that? Well, on the low side, we're looking at nine, foot. nine feet inside the building. There's also a roof overhang that well, will be lower by the time it gets past so Let's just talk building. about the inside. So the high point is about 13 feet. Yep. Nine feet to 13 feet. So it's like a one and a half pitch. We're still working on that, but that's the goal is we don't want anything super steep. We don't want anything super higher than 13 feet. Yeah. So if that means the outer wall needs to be eight feet, mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Um, he said, are we going to do any like exposed beams on in the big room? Don't know yet? Don't know yet. Okay. Uh, so Depends on how we end up doing the roof because we're still throwing out a couple ideas and we don't have to know how we're doing the roof before we get started because our two options are doable either way. Either way. Yeah. Um, his other question was framed walls. Drywall? Not drywall? I don't want drywall. You want crazy shaped framed walls, which is stressing me out. I know how to do it. I'm, it'll be fine. Okay. It will. It that. will continue to look and feel natural. Yes. I think is what we're getting at. Yes. Yeah. It's a fly Plaster. that keeps getting on my hat. Um. So here's another question. Sharon Rhodes says pros, propane is costly. Um, it's not compared to the solar system you need to build to run everything electric. Uh, depending on it, it depends on the the appliance um but yeah yeah so it's just something we got to decide how we want to do it uh yes geothermal heating that's what it was called was geothermal good. another question about the good tubes job. um so here's a good one from uh dp or 1112 mm -hmm. uh in the desert veteran builders will caution against installing only one large ac system it will fail someday because things break down over time and potential has health implications much better to have two or more smaller system it's actually what we're planning on doing yeah because we're doing mini splits um so yes we will have i think the plan right now is three outside units and then multiple inside head units it's all about those backups is it staying glass break uh no not yet let's see kel <laughs> kel kayla meckhart kel Mech, I don't know. Kel Mechart said, uh, let's talk about bathrooms. They think that we should have a bathroom for the boys, a bathroom for the girls, and a bathroom for us. So here's the thing. Septic's already installed. It's already sized for the amount of bathrooms that we have specified, so that's not changing. <laughs> and their house is too big as it is, so yeah. we're not adding on. Yeah. Another geothermal. Um, yes, it's a great idea. It just doesn't work for our house. Okay, here, Paul, Paul Van Hoots, Van Houts, uh, said, if you were having a steel roof, I wonder if you've looked at running most of your utilities up into a wall through your roof. Um, yes, that is what we're planning on doing for most of it, I think. Mm -hmm. Internet, water, electric, electric uh, gas, sound. sound, audio, yeah, all those, all those things for sure. Good idea. Okay, here's here's what here's what I was gonna talk about about the frame walls. Yeah, okay. uh, Dwight says using Hyper Adobe is great for insulation. Using conventional lumber on the inside walls would allow so much more living space. Um, and someone else had talked about using two by sixes instead of two by fours for the wall, so that you have plenty of space inside that cavity to run whatever you need to run, mm -hmm. um, which I think is also a good idea. So yeah, like we said, we're we're removing most of our interior hyper adobe walls and replacing them with framed walls for that reason because it simplifies our life mm -hmm. and that's a good thing how about steel walls sorry i just saw the comment on there uh no, no. way too expensive <laughs> also it kind of messes with like we want it to feel very earthen you know like a cave <laughs> Okay, so here's a good question. Uh, that is Do you a, need glasses? Well, it's user 0y1es6nk2n. Okay, that's why I'm like 
Whoa. So they're talking about, they said, since the basic layout of your house is circular, if I saw it correctly in your video, you seem to want to create a more circular roof made up of segments. Yes, like pizza pies. Yes. Yeah. But wouldn't it be easier, less complicated and cheaper, if you went back to planning a pitched square or rectangular shed roof instead? It would be way easier. However, we have this inner courtyard and we want light into that inner courtyard and air and um, air would still get in there. But like we have windows along that inner courtyard wall and we want that light to be coming in and well, not only that, but I mean, the assumption that it would be cheaper is just way off. Like, well, I don't know if it because be you would, you would end up with remember the the square area we set for this house was seven thousand square feet, but the actual livable space in the house is only about twenty five hundred square feet. So if you build a big square over a circle with a courtyard, you are massively increasing your roof costs, which would be nice yeah. for water catchment. Well, yeah, but but then it's like it know, also takes away from the whole aesthetic that we're going after We want the circular <laughs> shape to translate into the house yeah. and the roof and so for sure. Yeah, yep um, Another another from Anita Mulman about why not put an extra bathroom in Because we can and we don't want to <laughs> Septic's already done. Uh, are we gonna do a propane refrigerator says Kimry Smith? No, nope, no reason to uh, Newer, the newer ones are so Newer efficient. fridges are, yeah, they're so energy efficient. When we plugged up our deep freeze to this solar system, it was like nothing. It didn't increase it, didn't it at all. Anything. We were like, is it working? <laughs> and yeah, it's working. So uh, yeah, they're very efficient. For the size power system we'll have, that's that's not the draw we need to work. It's about. also annoying because we've been looking for a refrigerator to like have an extra refrigerator because we need one. Mm -hmm. And everything I've seen like on marketplace and craigslist is older and it's like so much power like two to three times the amount of power it's crazy yeah, yeah so and the new ones are too expensive yeah. so all right so here's a fun comment from our friends at talking irons coffee saloon oh, hey neighbor yeah thomas had some ideas okay. um he said consider induction for the cooktop and the oven we have considered we definitely have considered um because yes it 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 doesn't so his thing is is it doesn't heat up the space either mm -hmm. so in their coffee shop their induction cooktop they are able to cook in the summer and it's not miserable mm -hmm. which is a good perspective mm -hmm. um but yeah it goes back to that is it is it worth building the extra power system to do that ver versus electric because they're on the grid there um versus just doing it propane i don't know well, still like i said i i can totally have a one or two pot that's true yeah and it that i can pull out and be like much, it's yeah. too hot i don't want to put the propane on yeah. and i can do that okay so here's the other thing he turned us on to this whole hybrid uh hot water heater yes well him and clay, clay. yeah mm -hmm. so this is something we just learned about it's really cool uh it's a hybrid hot water heater which means that it does two things number one it uses a heat pump like a mini split and it uses like 500 watts i think is when we were looking at it and it heats all the water in the tank um it, but it does it a lot slower it also pulls the heat from the air right right so it helps cool whatever space it's in so if it's in like our utility room it would naturally yeah cool and dehumidify dehumidify does it do that maybe yeah okay because it pulls all the hot air out yeah it just acts like a dehumidifier kind of so so it uses a reasonable amount of electricity it would be totally easy to do on a decent sized solar system but then if it can't keep up because it is it takes about twice as long then it will kick on its 240 volt element and use like 3500 watts or something so there's a lot more watts but hopefully it wouldn't have to do that very much um, so anyway it's a good idea I like it we even if we go with propane we may end up doing that on electric just because it's such a cool idea but I don't know instant hot water with the propane I don't know yes stained glass <laughs> yes stained glass I still have this guy hello hi why is he not biting you why does he only bite me, he me. okay ready mm -hmm. it's another mirror one I like the mirror ones a lot. I do too, but they're only one way. See how it's 
just black on That's the other true. side because yeah. it is a mirror. Mm -hmm. um, but it still looks really cool. It gives really cool reflections. Anyway, number three. Is that good? That's good. Okay. Uh, Elena, Aline Holina says, how long will it take to build a house like this? That's a great question. 57 years. Uh, it's going to take, take a few years for sure, I think. Yes. When we're 90, we'll enjoy it. No, no, no. no. It's going to be great. We're going to, if we we're look gonna at... We're going to do workshops. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna get we're people gonna involved. And also, if you just look back at, like, how much faster we've gotten lane bags on the chicken garden and then on the outhouse, um, I, I think it's going to go faster than we think it is. Also, Especially we've... Especially with removing a lot of those. Yeah, we just removed walls. a bunch of those walls, so it should go even quicker. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't think it'll be as bad as you think. I would love to have all the walls done in the winter yeah. and a roof on before it gets miserably hot in the summer. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, Marie Beam says, what about closets? No closets. Actually, the rooms increased in size when we took out the earth bag walls yep. and put in two by six walls. Mm -hmm. So we did tell them if they want a closet, we will totally build them a closet, but I don't think anybody wants it. We don't have a bunch of stuff that needs to hang up. They'll have their own dresser, which which is huge, because, yeah. I mean, we don't have space for clothes, really. So there's plenty of room in the room for a dresser. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we you could go it. either way, but I like the idea of being able to uh, remove the dresser physically, you know, if the, the kids get older and they move out and we don't want to have a closet in there anymore. Like, if we build a closet in, it's kind of permanent, so... Uh, probably not a lot of closets. <gasps> and if they want to hang something, I can get really creative with hanging like a bar and like making it visually yeah. pleasing. Yeah. Okay, next question. This is from Hayden. Oh, hey, Hayden. Hey, Curva texture. Uh, Curva. Curva texture. He said, this is out of control. We built a super dovey section of the Willow Inn Roundhouse. It's like deja vu. So, yeah, we have been talking to Hayden a lot. Uh, we got Did some... I already mention that I followed him and he didn't know it yeah. and he followed us and I didn't know it. Yeah. And then it's a, it's neat. Yeah. So you may have seen a video we put out the other day that the, we actually ended up talking to Hayden and the people that lived in and designed the Willow and Round House, which is kind of like the inspiration for our house. Uh, we had a really great conversation. We're going to be putting that out next week. Um, good insights from them that are yeah. helping sort of cement some of these changes and ideas that we're going to be making. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mary Song says, your hallway looks really narrow. I'm hoping you can make it at least four feet wide so you can get furniture and things through it. So it actually was four feet. Mm -hmm. um, but then we went to Clay's, and he had a five-foot hallway, mm -hmm. and we were both like, this feels way better. Yeah. Just having that extra room where you could put something in the hallway, like a small bench or yeah. bookshelves or whatever. So we have increased our hallway. It's five foot now. Yeah, and I think too, like, yes, it was four feet, but it's it's a pretty tight curve, and yeah, so, so it, it feels small. smaller. So, yeah, so we made it bigger. We'll talk about that more in the next video. Oh, no. Where did... Mm. Did I get to the end of them? No way. Hey, Hold on, job. hold on. That was not 50 questions. But... It was not, no. <laughs> Where did it go? I know there was more questions. Um... Oh, yeah, we'll get to those okay. questions in a second here. Hold on. Do you want me to take the cat, or are you good? I'm okay. He like, why is he not biting you? He's discontent with me. That's all. Maybe I pet him too much. <laughs> He's like annoyed. He's like. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's make sure we answered all the questions. Nope, that was it. Okay. Okay. Now, sorry, we haven't been answering, we haven't been talking to anybody. Um, well, we had a lot of questions we had to get through first. I know. So, we've answered all those questions. Now we're going to get in and we're going to see where everybody's at. Uh oh, you got to mute that. Where's the comments? Live, Live chat. chat. Live chat. No. <laughs> Golly. Guys, I'm sorry. Hold on. Okay, here go. we go. Jeez. Okay, we got a lot to catch up on. First, thank you to Sharon. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Sharon. Sorry, we just noticed that. She sent us a tip. <laughs> yeah, we just see it. <laughs> um, okay, someone's... Okay, Simon Stokes says, For power lines in the concrete, can you run them through ducting piping so they can be replaced? Yeah, that's a good idea. We'll be down with our PEX lines, too, if any of them end up underneath the ground. Which I don't think they have to. Nope. Yeah. There's not any place that they can't go up in the ceiling and drop down. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, Rattlesnake James says that floodplain was a real deal killer for us on an otherwise perfect property. Um, so, what well, I mean, there are certain properties in this area that are labeled as floodplain. And if they are, then that means you're, you're going to have water situations. So yeah. don't even here, like we're not in a flood zone, but we've seen it where <laughs> it gets iffy, like yep. a lot of sheet flooding. Mm -hmm. Um, which That's, is why we built up the house pad. And why and we put, put in the, the berm as well. Yeah. Right in front yeah. of the house. Um, yeah. However, if you are in a floodplain, like that is one thing when you're even with the owner builder opt out, like you, can't you, you, you have to build however far enough away from your wash that they tell you to, because otherwise you're just going to, you're going to have problems. That's how you deal with it. You don't build next to the wash. No. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> it's better to be over building here anyway. We're, we just, we build everything way stronger than we need to and yeah. like, you know yep um paul j connor senior says propane is way more efficient for cooking and electric any day of the week he's dead on for the money for his points okay <laughs> uh darla says love the idea of a wood cook stove yep pat asked how hot is it now oh it's like 80 high 80s yeah, it's cooled down. I, I'm sure we'll have another heat wave before yeah. the summer leaves us, but um, it's been not bad. Next week says low 90s. Yeah. So I, it's not been bad at all. Yep. yep. We had a few weeks of like really hot weather and then mm -hmm. cooled down. Let's see. We still haven't got enough rain though. No, Can we I have not. About rain? We can, yeah. <laughs> I saw a meme the other day that was like, it said something like it was talking to the 2023 monsoon season and it said i'm very disappointed i'm not mad i'm just very disappointed <laughs> in you yeah, all right yeah very yeah. disappointed um red and april off grid said our propane costs less than 15 dollars a month and we use it for our dryer and our oven so yeah yeah so there there is cost savings there um but it is possible to do it via electric it's just like whether you want to invest in that yeah it's, it's expensive. <laughs> uh, okay, someone said, talked about biogas again. He is so relaxed with you. Are we ever going to finish the chicken garden? Not right now. We've got it's other stuff a, to do. Not top priority, no. and the cost to finish it is cost that we need to be putting towards, putting the, house. towards the house. I mean, it's it's functional yeah it's, it's working it's just not the plaster isn't finished yeah that's pretty much it and yeah. the garden it's a lot of time and a lot of money to finish that so mm -hmm. i'd rather put our time and money towards the house yeah at this point but we will finish it eventually um red and april said has your overall design changed or just utility type and placement uh yeah yeah it's changed a little bit we'll get into that in the next video that's coming out um but yes there has been a few important changes it's not nothing drastic though well we went through several different variations of the house design you know at one point it was a complete circle and the inside was like the living room and kitchen well we've already shown all that yeah. i think they're saying since we showed our oh, our plans okay. it's changed just a little bit just yeah. a little just a little bit um Sorry. Have a workshop to build a cistern. Yeah, I just, I don't know if we're doing a cistern right now. Probably it's, not. No, not anytime soon. Yeah. An underground cistern could be risky, Catherine says. Yes. Yep. Yes. The kitty is adorable. I agree. Um, sorry. There's a lot of hummingbirds that keep going over to my plants over there. Really? Yeah. That's cool. I keep watching. Uh, Janar says, weirded out by poop fumes. <laughs> I know, it's so weird, but I but mean But not a by lot of... corpse fumes? I don't know what that means. I mean, I guess it's all dead stuff, right? Yeah. In the biogas? Yeah. <sighs> Glassius Flux says, always time for a stained glass break. I think it's time. Oh. Do it another one. Okay. <laughs> 
So in case you're just joining us, Ashley has made these adorable little mementos of our Casa de Caca room. This one actually Stained glass. is another one that Tracy made and designed. So I didn't make this. Oh, okay. Sorry. She picked the colors. Well, this is perfect timing then. Okay. I like how it's like a totally different vibe than the one you did. Yeah, Tracy likes um, dark, dead things. <laughs> Sorry, Tracy. <laughs> no, she does a lot of bats and like coffin and spiders and webs and it's really cool art. But this is her color scheme. It's a whole different vibe. For yeah, sure. I love it though. Yeah, like I would cool. totally put this in my house. Anyway, thanks, Tracy. Yeah, so. Again, there's only five of those. When are we going to do the link to those soon? I feel like we should, we're getting to that point. I have one more, maybe. We'll okay, at the end. end. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Um, let's see. Don says, I grew up in a house with one bathroom for seven, seven, seven? seven people. I wonder how many bathrooms your parent, your, um, my dad, your dad, oh my he was one of 13 kids. Yeah, yeah. I bet they had one bathroom. Probably. I should ask him. Well, ask anyway, she said they didn't have any issues. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everybody gets on a schedule, so it's like, it's fine. <laughs> it's what happens when you live together all the time. Uh, Glassius Flex had a good, had a good point. So I think people don't realize that there is a bathroom in our bedroom yeah. and another bathroom. So yeah. there's already two bathrooms in the house. Yeah. Yeah. Not just one. And we have an outdoor bathroom. And yeah, yeah we have options. Uh, Golden Sun said, did you catch any of that Hillary rain? No, we got a lot of wind. We did get rain one night. Yeah, it wasn't. It didn't um, amount to a whole lot. Basically, it's just been running down this mountain range behind us, and we're right on the edge of it, and we yeah. just haven't really got any of it. We watch it go all around us. Yeah. Pantry. Someone asked about my pantry. I'm oh, gonna have a pantry. Catherine. I'm really excited about my pantry. You talk about also, your pantry? <laughs> I don't want to give away too much about the wall, but the wall for the pantry is gonna be. It'll be a big walk in pantry, no closed no door. door, so nope. you can just walk in. You'll only see like a very organized portion of the pantry, mm -hmm. shelves, there'll be a countertop all around. Our deep freeze will be in there. And on the outside of it, Adelaide has requested a coffee bar. Yeah, this is specifically for Adelaide. We would never have put a coffee bar in. <laughs> we don't, like, really we drink, don't drink coffee. coffee, but she loves making coffee. Yeah. And our guests might like coffee, so we'll learn how to do it. And maybe we'll eventually love coffee. Who knows? Yeah. But it is Adelaide's coffee bar. Yep. All right, so this is a fun question. Okay. Hex Farmer says, I think you should make your house hex-shaped. And their icon has hexes on it. <laughs> hexagons, not hexes. Hexes? <laughs> yeah, not hexes. Sorry, hexagons. Um, well, so the roof, by uh, the time you pizza pie it, well, we've already shown We don't that. know for sure if that's the way it's going to be. But it, If it, it can be round, I'd prefer it to be round. It's not going to be round. It might be. No. We'll see. It'll look more like the Millennium Falcon if it's not round. Listen. Also, the rounded they, gutters cost too much. I know they cost too much, but can we just also, leave it? Also, the water catchment. Remember, it simplifies I, gutters and water catchment. I understand that, but can we just consider keeping a round roof? Sure, we'll consider it. Okay. Um, sorry, no hexagons. It, it wouldn't be a hexagon anyway. I think it's, it's an octagon. octagon, I think is what it turned yeah. out to be. Or maybe It more. was eight. It was, was it eight, eight sides. Yeah, that's right. It was. Okay. Uh, my dad, Dan oh. Longnecker, he Does says. Does he tell how many bathrooms? Nope. Oh, he said, he "Will." <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, Dad, how many how many bathrooms, bathrooms did you have when you all lived together with all thirteen kids? Leave a comment. Okay. <laughs> uh, will there be a drain system in the courtyard to take care of excess rainwater? Great question. Well, we were talking to Will and Roundhouse about that because it's my main concern. But the inside circle is only 24 feet which will not accumulate a ton of water the ground will be graded away from the building it'll all be like go to the center and then out mm -hmm. so we can put a french drain in before or after like if we see that it's a problem 
Yeah. We could put a French drain in. But even the Willow and Roundhouse people get a ton of water and they said they didn't do that and they haven't had any issues. You just gotta make sure the, the ground is graded properly. Yeah. Can, can I ask you a favor? Sorry, what? Can we move so I'm not in the sun? Yeah. I'm baking it. Just be careful which way you turn it. Yeah. You gotta go this way. Okay. Yeah. Can't show you the secret project. Can't do it. Sorry, guys. Little bit of movement here. You're gonna have to go further back. Why? Oh, you're I'm still, still oh my gosh. Hold on. Yeah. Like over here? Yeah. That's oh, don't let them see the reflection. Oh, geez. Oh, man. There's too many. There's stuff in there. It doesn't show it. There were slobs when we were. Jeez. It was a late night. It was. Okay. Um, I didn't lock it. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Um, Miguel says, will you be releasing the blueprints to the house? Blueprints. What? <laughs> Do you want our scribbles on the paper? We have a SketchUp model that is in horrible disarray it's that we're working on. It's pretty rough. No, it's not. It's pretty rough. It looks great. Um, I don't know. Maybe probably four not. years from now when we're done? No, yeah. probably not. Um, it's hey, but you know what we can say? I think, oh, well, maybe we can't say No, that. we no? can't. Okay, so nope. never mind. Um, anyway. Uh, you can't say that. Red and April said, are you considering earthen floors in some of your living areas um we have considered that definitely <laughs> we've gone back and forth on this a lot okay so my original plan was a sunken living room with a earthen floor i still love that idea yeah. but i haven't been able to remove furniture for eight years and that's like a passion of mine is rearranging things as i can confirm <laughs> this is a passion of hers so the floor is going to be all one level. And then Jonathan's like, well, we could still section it off and do an earthen floor. And I'm like, that means nobody's drinking in there or eating in there or is sick when they're in there because I don't want to have to clean that. It's just harder to clean an earthen floor we found with our shed. Um, also, it's really hard to install. And then we were like, oh, well, we could put it in the hallway. We could do an earthen floor in the hallway mm -hmm. and then everything else is... And then I'm like, no, because if the kids get up and they puke on the floor, like that's like a whole nother thing. I need, I need. You're very clean. focused on the puke. Yeah. Here. Well, it's happened so many times. <laughs> if you have kids, you know. Yeah. So, that's true. anyway, we're doing concrete. Probably. There may be like one or two little spots where there's earthen floor, but probably not living areas. Yeah. Yeah. That seems. That, I think that's where we are right now. That could change in the future, but. I love it. I love walking on it. I love the feel of it. I love the look of it. Yeah. I just don't know. I, don't, I know how hard it is to clean. Yeah. And I just want to be able to clean things really well. Okay. Um, Lydia says, will you guys buy or lease a propane tank or stick with the smaller one? If we, we would buy one. If we do, we'll get a really big one and just have them come out. And we'll We're buy not leasing it. it. Yeah, we won't no. lease it. Yeah. We've heard from neighbors, don't ever lease it. Uh, so. Yeah, our neighbors had a batch of dirty propane oh. delivered and it like ruined a bunch of their appliances and like you want to be furnace. able to have options. Yeah. It ruined everything. Yeah. It was Make like sure. black smoke everywhere. It was bad. Um, Let's see. See? Nine people, one bathroom, no one died. See? Susie. It happens. Yep. Yep. Nobody in third world countries has yeah. even a bath. Like, <laughs> anyway. Yeah. We'll be fine. Uh, v Mint says, is it first come, first serve for the stained glass? Or can we order one? So it will be first come, first serve here in a minute when we show the last one. Yep. There's only five. There's only five. I'm sorry. We'll probably do it again if this goes well because, guys... Honestly, we just need to raise money for the house. Building the house is it so is expensive. It is so expensive. Why is it so expensive? We're doing it at the worst possible time, I think. <laughs> the price of everything has gone up. Yeah. Um, Havasu77 said, yay. I said two by six walls for the space inside, but also for a more sturdy structure for holding up the roof. Yeah. Yep. Although I don't think it'll hold the roof up. No, it's not load bearing walls, mm -hmm. but um, it is going to be nice just for having the extra room. Yeah. What a typical time says greening the desert video from last year made me discover you guys um, It looks like your garden is getting more green this time of year. It gets very very green. Yes yeah. uh, It'll change in the winter. Yeah, it's just the cycle of things. Brown yeah, in the winter. but it is We have got a little rain and the grass is starting to grow up. So it's not as much as usual, but you know Real quick. Yeah, can you look at cloud? Look at him. Right there <laughs> 
my goodness. That's adorable. I need a picture. How about an earthen floor in the center of the courtyard? No. No. I don't think so. No. Nope. I don't know what we're doing in the courtyard, but it won't be an earthen floor. I have floor. some ideas. You, I mean, I don't think you want to do an earthen floor outside, no. do you? No. No, okay. It would have to be covered, and we're not covering that area. No. Also, I have some ideas for that courtyard. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Mm. It involves a tortoise. <gasps> my dad said yes, one bathroom. See? 13 kids. <laughs> 13 kids. 15 people. We're so spoiled in America with our 12 bathrooms. <laughs> Some people Just think kid. they need a bathroom for every bathrooms. kid. Well, I'm sure there's people with 12 bathrooms. Not us. Nope. Nope. <laughs> hey, is your dad retired yet? I don't know. That's, that's October. That's, that's a personal question. Oh, sorry. Um... <laughs> Okay, I think, guys, I think we've answered all of your questions. Holy moly. <sighs> oh, man, we went Oh, there's another hour. one. There's another one. Will, uh, Darla says, will the earthen floors hold up the dogs? Hold, hold up, up like well it. to the dog. Mm, that's a good question. Probably, Probably not. not great. Also, we're doing concrete. No, walls. Oh, no, she said floors and walls. Um, walls will be fine. Well, they, they better not be messing with the walls. I have to train them. Yes. All It'll right. Be old by the time. Man, we got all the way to the end of this. This is the last stained last glass. Last stained glass. This one might be my favorite because it's the closest to our actual door art. Yeah. Uh -huh. Are you ready? Mm hmm What if I just draw it out? <laughs> Ta-da! Look love at it. it. I love it. Can we get close up? so cool i know I that's my one. favorite i kind of wanted to keep it but we're we need <laughs> we're gonna sell it so go go get all of them yeah so we're gonna do this are you ready i hope this works i set this up like five minutes How before are they we gotta know which one it is they're not they're gonna get surprised oh, no. you're gonna have to hold them all up they don't get to pick which one no oh, i don't have a way to do that don't have a way maybe we'll figure out a way to do that later on but anyway um, you didn't get them. I thought you were going to get them. Well, I mean, like... <laughs> she sprung this on me last minute, guys. I'm just doing my best. So, we have five of them. She's going to bring over. First come, first serve. Get your internet browsers ready. Oh, my gosh. Are you ready? Are they going to go in order? Like, the order that I... It's just, you don't know what you're going to get. Nope, you don't. But this it's is still cool. all oh, about the all surprise. Cool. All about the surprise. And there'll be some extra little things in there from me. It's not just stained glass. Okay, we've drawn out long enough. Okay. All right. Ready? Let me make sure this works. Hold on. Hello. Let me check the link. I mean, you can't go wrong. Either one you get is going to be cute. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I could... I'm not going to promise anything. I want to make more. We'll see. All right. Are you putting it up? It's tinyshinyhome.com slash glass. That's it. There's an order form. There's only five. When it's done, it will tell you they are gone. Good luck to you all. May the odds ever be in your favor. <laughs> I was going to say that, but then I decided not. <laughs> okay. So is that it? This cat is he's like, like he's so hot. I'm just like he's... sweating. Look at this. He's I'm sleeping sweating. with you. He's just... Yeah, the whole time. He bit me the whole time. Well, you know, he just he just likes me. He does. He just All likes the animals me. just gravitate towards you, and I'm the one that wants them to pet. Look, anyway. how, look how cute he is. Yeah, look at him. He's pretty cute. Oh, he's like, oh, 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 stretches. Oh, a little purring heater. All right, do we have any more questions? Nope. Let's see. We have some things we need to get going on, you know? We gotta I got, go work on the got house. stuff to do. We gotta go work on the house. All right, we'll just answer a few more questions. We'll give people time to do this thing, glass, okay. and then we'll jump off. It. Okay. Um, Barry says, "How is the garden going? The garden is gone. The garden is dead. <laughs> um, Hottest summer on record for a while. I didn't have any shade. It's my fault. Oh, I, I understand think it's, this. I think it's, it's the sun's fault. Well, it's my fault because I didn't provide the proper shade. Yeah. I have a plan to make it better next summer. I'm going to be moving the beds to a different location, 
but that takes a while to do. What? Yeah. Remember I told you? Oh my gosh. I told you where to, it oh needs to go. Oh my gosh. And you were like, that's so much work. And I yep, said, yes. It is. Way too much. We have other things to do. Maybe I can get a few friends to come help. <laughs> Maybe. I, I bet you can. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is that it? Um, Glassius Flux says you can come make more, but you have to get tacos. <gasps> Please. We did not have enough time to get tacos. <laughs> we said we were going to do art and tacos and we ran yeah. out of time. Yeah. I... And I really need to show her where the tacos are. There's two good locations near her. Tacos are life. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the, yeah, it's been a brutal summer this year. Like, um, I don't think we realized how bad it was because we actually had shade and solar power and air conditioning. Yeah, we were talking to several friends and they were like, this is the worst summer we've ever seen. I'm like, I think 2020 was worse. That was the summer we moved here, but they were like, no, you just didn't have any shade or anything, so it felt worse to you. This was the worst year. Yeah. So. So I don't think thankful. I don't think it's all your fault that the garden didn't mm -hmm. work because like even even the berms and swales, I mean, it's they were struggling. looking a little rough. Like they even though we were watering, we had, to do, a lot more had water. to do extra watering because it was just so hot and there was no rain like there usually is. So, but I think I think we made it through. Mm -hmm. um, Oh yeah, I forgot. What? what? The workshop. We didn't even talk oh about the gosh. workshop. Guys, there's too much going on. Uh, yes, there's a workshop next weekend here. Is there? Yeah. <laughs> there's a workshop um, September 1st through 5th. Yep. And you should sign up and come hang out with us. You should. Um, we're doing lunch and we'll be doing, it's a secret project. Yep. Well, it's it's right here. We're We've working got it on it ready. right now. We've got it Prepped and ready. We're very excited about it. Very excited about Turned it. Turned out really cool. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it's just, if you go to our website, there's a big banner at the top of the page. Yeah. TinyJennyHome.com. Um, you can sign up. You can come one day, five days. It's holiday weekend, so you shouldn't have to get off work. Mm -hmm. um, we check the Airbnbs and stuff, and they're pretty open in the area if you need to stay overnight. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, we'd love to have you come out and come build some hyper adobe and bottle break stuff also us. people were worried about if it was going to be too hot and i don't know what it's going to be like next weekend but this coming week is, looks really nice so yeah i don't think we'll be too hot also notice we are in the shade and yeah. this is the area where we'll be there's working. lots of shade where we'll um, be working so it all works out it's good come hang out with us <laughs> <laughs> all right are we done? I feel like there was something else. We were, oh, Jack, we're we supposed to have Oh, Jack's car. Oh, man, guys, weird. Jeez, sorry. So, Jax has been working on his desert cards, too. And they're really cool. He just keeps getting better with each one, each, like, series that he works on. Um, are you coming? Huh? Are you coming? Yeah. Come. I just had to go I'm get just, the cards. I've been talking a long time. I'm running out of talks. Okay. Okay. Jax is making desert theme cards. He's raising money for something that he is passionate about. What is it this month? Uh, airsoft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he he is motivated. So yeah. he has a lot of these ready to go. They are marker. Like, look yeah. at the shading on it. Isn't shading it so is cute? so good. Like, it's He's so gotten good. so good at... Anyway. I like his style, yeah. Yeah, he's got um, a cute stuff. So yeah, they're at tinyshanehome.com slash Pack of five. Pack of five. Each one is... They look weird in the... They thing. do look a little they weird. They look neon, but they're, they're not. They're not neon. Um, what's, what's cool is that he... There, it's not like the same... Like every drawing's different. Yeah. Um, so if you order a pack, then you don't know what you're going to get. They're all handmade. It's too. all handmade. There's no, it's not printed. There's no template. Nope. Um, he's not copying anything. Like yeah. each set is different, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Yep. Um, I think that's it. Workshop, cards, stained glass. Okay, well, okay, all the oh. links one more time. Okay. All the links one more time. TinyShinyHome.com, banner at the top of the page if you want to come to the workshop. Yep. Uh, if there's any of the stained glass left, TinyShinyHome.com slash glass. And if you want cards, tinyshinyhome.com slash cards. I tried to make it as easy as possible. Thanks. Yep. Ugh, I'm like sweating. Yeah. My arm is his soaked. His hair is wet. Look at this. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at him. Okay. He's so cute. I okay. think it's time for us to leave. Which one is this? Yamian. It's Yamian. 
Yumyun says goodbye. We'll see you later. Uh, Monday, next video? Monday, next video. House, house changes and Willow and Ran House call. Yep. Discussion. It'll be lots of fun. Yep. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. We hope you have a great weekend. Uh huh. We'll see you soon. Okay. I'm good.